Doctors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman here. Of course, my show is the one that follows Tommy Jr. There's market kickoff. Great shows discussing uh, real estate, discussing a lot of things, just doing, discussing Microsoft and all. And then I had a very good interview with uh, Kevin Hinks uh, from uh, Think or Swim. I just, uh, this is, we try to offer as much information as we can here. TFN Education is what it's all about. And we're looking at the Dow down 151 at 32,900. There's a lot. <clears throat> Excuse me. There's a lot to discuss. Let me have a little tea here. For the throat. There you are. That's better. Okay. A lot to discuss. Let's go through this. So what we were looking at yesterday is there was a chance due to the oversold condition of that thousand point drop on Friday um, that at least some kind of a reversal could take place. It wasn't good enough that there should be a reversal. There needed to be a, a really good candle formed, certainly in the Dow. So what I showed to subscribers on my opening call is that there's a pattern that I talk about. It's called the Roman candle. Basically, what it is, is that it's usually a price formation that occurs at a top. Remember, uh, I've been talking about this in relation to the S&P. I may as well just talk candle to candle. So on the upside, when there is a really, oh, I didn't mean to do that, whatever that was. Let's just do this again. Uh, let's be X done X, there we go, thank you. So when we're looking at the, um, we're looking at this candle right here at highs especially in a monthly chart, when I see a high with a candle that is going to highs and then opens with a tiny little wick and then a long body down and then a close a half to two thirds above the low, then what I say is, uh-oh, be a little careful because that could signal as it did in 2007 in the S&P, that could signal that if there is a close halfway in a shorter time frame of the lower wick, you've got to be really careful because it pertains to uh, the weakness of that turnaround from the low, in this case from the 14 period, 14 period moving average, the black line, to the upside, not, not showing the strength that it should. And then what happens is you've got to monitor that. And I always say within two bars, maybe three, but it's really, it's, it's actually within this particular pattern, it's the very next bar. If there is a move down, you've got to be careful. Well, we had a second one, not quite exactly the same, but pretty, pretty close. But on the downside, when you get a green uh, Chapman Wave Roman candle that looks very much like, where did it go, like this, uh, that is the candle that we saw back on the 24th of January, long-legged, and then it had a very choppy couple of days. Remember, there was something that was talking about the Fed and all that. And we went chop, 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 and then eventually we went to a peak A, peak B. And when, instead of going to a D, which would have completed the buy mode obligation, it went to a C at 35, 824, and then plunged to the downside. Wait. It did exactly that same candle on the 24th of February, a month later, at 32,272. And that went to peak A, peak B, and then a really choppy. In fact, even after that peak, which was great the next day, it went choppy, 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 and had a sharp pullback, held nicely above the 32,272 level. And then what happened? It ran all the way up to a peak D at 35,372, dropped quite sharply, made the cup formation, held the Chapman Wave. Uh, this is the falling axe formation support level. Ran to a higher high. That was, what was the day that I was away? Thursday? Yeah, last Thursday. It went to 35,492 at a peak E and then plunged. And of course, Friday uh, was even worse. 900, a 900 point close. 
uh, to the downside was actually a thousand points, only more than a thousand points. And then yesterday we had that turnaround. Well, what happened? We produced exactly the same candle. Now you can't see it too well here, but I wanted to show you what I see to subscribers. And then I outline every single day uh, what needs to be done in the Dow. Uh, where the close should be and what it pertains to, in particular to the patterns that we're looking at. All right, so now let's see what this looks like in um, real time. We're going to go to, I may as well just go here. This is a chart I showed a moment ago. And we went to this candle right here. I'm, I'll expand it so that you can see it nicely. Oops, wrong one right here. There. So that's the candle from yesterday. This is the candle currently as we're seeing it. This is the candle from the uh, 24th of Feb. There it is. And this is the same candle, same formation back on the 24th of January. So this is really an important moment because what we're looking at is within the context of uh, the patterns, there has to be a close above the high of yesterday, certainly above the close of yesterday, which was at 34,049. But I always say it has to be the high of the candle, uh, the wick itself, and that's at 34,106. That's going to be really tough to do. But this is what I'm looking at. So we did go long. That long has so far held. Yesterday, we actually were long. We took profits, took profits uh, shorter term, just um, in different parts of the same position. We got out a little bit, and then yesterday we got out with a very nice gain. Um, and we went back in early yesterday morning. That's it. Does that get stopped out today? I don't know. But this is what we're looking at because Microsoft, it's a really important part of the of the Dow, and Microsoft comes out with earnings today, and um, it's had the 270 round number low at, on the 8th of March, and that pertained to an H pattern that failed after being repelled at the Chapman Wave uh, falling axe resistance level, and then. At a trough D, it ran all the way to a peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. What is the obligation? of the uh, Chapman Wave methodology is to try to find the lowest low bar, um, get a signal that says you've got a buy signal, it gets upgraded to a buy mode. The implication is it should have at least four have higher peaks, uh, alphabetize them, A, B, C, D. It can go all the way to E, F, and G. There's never an H. But at D, other things can happen. That's where you could start to get what I call a recycle of the waveform, you could go E slash A, F slash B, G slash C, and then finally you get your D. What was the chart? I think I wrote it down. Oh, I hope so. Um, well, it's just a perfect example. Oh, I, I, I haven't got it in front of me. So a buy signal gets upgraded to a buy mode at a certain point, maybe after a leg B, uh, and that says there is a target of D. That's the reason why in the S&P, having made a peak B, all the others have got to do um, notations in the Chapman Wave that says their monthly charts could have a pretty decent pullback. But the S&P says you might have a pullback, but you should still go to a new higher high leg C and then a leg D. So I'm talking about Microsoft because 20, 270 was the round number low on the 8th. Yesterday's number was, number, number was 270.77 at a trough E, and we went to a peak D at the top in an arch formation. Really important, I'll talk about the patterns as soon as I get back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Everyone, we're back. Dow's down 312. SP's down 60. This is uh, not great action at all. And the QQQs, look at this. Uh, NDX 100 uh, trading vehicle down uh, 8 at 321.37. You can see the 317.45. Look how many arches we've seen. The Chapman methodology, these dreaded H's coming back now in a leg D to the downside. Uh, it's really important. Question came in. I'll do this right now about DDD. We were talking about it yesterday. I said, yeah, you can think about it as just a real near term, a long position, but make the stop 35 cents, a real tight stop. Well, today made a lower low, 13.01 in the dreaded H failure pattern. Uh, not good. 3D systems, uh, DDD trading at 13.01, down 74 cents. Just got to be real careful. So what I say to the subscribers is, we're treating this just as as small near term. These are near term positions, but we do have a couple of stocks that I love in the sense that uh, they are kind of under the radar right now. In fact, um, both are. Let's see, are they both? Uh, they both were up just a moment. I can't see right now, but they were both up a moment ago in this market. That's not a bad sign. And uh, we've just been very so the highest cash position I think we've ever been in. Well, certainly for a long, long time. Um, I don't see any any reason to rush into anything. The reason why I'm mentioning Microsoft is, look, Microsoft, if it fails from here, then that H pattern becomes an A minus in the weekly chart from the peak E all time high at 349.67 at a peak D in the, in the monthly chart and a very ugly red candle in April uh, underneath uh, for four months. The 14 period moving average has been taken out, but we've closed well above it. In fact, above the, the green nine period exponential moving average. This is the first time. We're not even close. We're in a leg A to the downside still, and we've gone from the 349 level to the 274. <laughs> I mean, 30 percent. This is Microsoft, and I. What I'm saying is that I'm being very careful because if I start to see the big cap former uh, really great leaders, uh, in, especially in the in the Dow tech area. I've got to consider that that's going to be a big negative on, on the market. So we've raised cash 
um, looking at other areas that might be pot potential shorts, and I'll get to that in a moment. But let me just say that this is this is a good reason why I've been very careful. Look at Facebook going to the Chapman Wave Inside Track propellant zone in the monthly chart of the being at 383 in September is trading now at 181. I mean, 200 points lower. No, 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 no. This is not good. made a peak e in the uh, daily chart. Beautiful arch formation, dreaded H. And look at this failure pattern. Peak E in the um, weekly chart. Ooh. And look at Goog. Goog, I think, comes out with earnings. Is that also today? I think so. Goog, it made a peak D. How many peak Ds have we seen here in the daily charts in the arch formation and failing? I, I, you just have to respect that this market is so vulnerable um, that how the selectivity unfolds is going to be very important. Can we rotate? And I'll talk about that as I, as I get through because I've got the questions that pertain to that right now. Uh, there was This is a perfect rogue wave. I think, Yes, I did. I put this in for anybody who ever rem remind me. If ever I'm talking about a Chapman Wave rogue wave, let me find an example. That rogue wave, the week of the 4th of February, to 3,042.00, round number, all-time high. Let me just double-check. I mean, 3,042.00, a round number. So if a week before you were short and you thought, I'm, this is fine, the technicals, the weekly technicals are just horrible, it looks terrible, that big spike on the week of the 5th of, 4th of February, Perfect rogue wave. What does a rogue wave mean? It means that you were correct in looking at the short side because everything pertained to uh, going lower with lower highs and lower lows. And then out of the blue, like a rogue wave, if you've ever looked at uh, go to Google and just Google rogue waves, these are things that just, they just suddenly occur. And very often at the moment, that moment, there's very little, maybe there's a tsunami somewhere, it creates a tsunami. But at that moment, it, it occurs through a very complex geophysical, it, we don't have to get into it. Just to say, there's a big spike. And in the stock market, what happens is the price goes above the previous high long enough for all those people that were long and got out to say, oh, no, what did I do? I, I, I'm going back, at least I'm going back in for a little bit. And the shorts say, Holy moly, what, what, who, what? I knew I should have, what, that Google, who goes to short alphabet? When they changed the name to alphabet, that was a big, big mistake. Who, who shorts Google? And they, they cover. And then the same bar just flips over and closes. And within two bars, it's back to where you were, just the previous, in this case, previous bar, the previous week. And it continues down. That's a rogue wave. It out of the blue, and it fools both the bulls and the bears, and then it continues on its merry way to the downside. And look what happened. So what we're looking at now in a monthly bar, look at this candle. This is just saying that Google has a serious problem, and the serious problem is that if it doesn't hold, whoops, if it doesn't hold, well, there's nothing on the left side until you get to uh, two two three zero oh, point oh five. That was the low of the week of the fourteenth of May. So something here. Yesterday's candle was good. If today, instead of pulling back, it was just a minor pullback. Uh, instead of opening at uh, twenty four fifty five and then plunging to um, the twenty three hundreds, it opened at twenty four fifty five ish. Uh, held just for a brief moment, and today. At this particular time, right now, 10.28, 10.25 in the morning, Eastern Time, it was trading very close to the high of yesterday, which was 24.55. Uh, 20, whoops, open at 24. No, it couldn't be. The high was 24.65. So it needs to be, and this is now going to be really difficult. However, this is what I want to talk about. And we're going to go to it in a moment. I just wanted to quickly say the IWM, Russell 2000, I had a good candle yesterday. It's making the dreaded H pattern. Why did 87.92 is absolutely key to hold this week regardless? Then the next thing we're looking at here is, um, I'm, I'm not sure if I did this during the 
just the update. I'll do it now. The gold is up six at 19.01. As I said, my target is uh, somewhere around the 1865 area, 66 area, where the 200 period moving average is. Uh, and then we'll decide because I, I think gold is in play looking out over the many weeks to come. But getting in for the next bounce is going to be important. I'll do Bitcoin quickly because I forgot to do it yesterday. Going nowhere, it's down 640 at 39,570. Just stuck in range, made a peak D in the rectangle formation. It's stuck in the kind of just under the midpoint. I just see it as stuck. Silver is trading at, um, there we go, silver's broken the left side low. I said just be careful with silver. And yep, it's at 23.58. You're looking at crude. Oh, let's go to the dollar. Is the dollar holding the gains? Oh, that's the other thing I want to do. Dollar is at 101.95. Target is 102.99, the January high. Um, this is really outstanding action. There's a lot to talk about, and I've written it down. So let me go. We've got a break coming up, and then I'm going through all the questions. Down 346 in the Dow, down 65 in the S&P. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector, as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, okay, folks. So we're back. I just want to check something. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, so we've got to be real careful. Uh, I just wanted to double check to see if I made, if we got, uh, there we go. Uh, what is today? Tuesday. Got it. Yes. Okay. So, um, just on a purely technical basis, we're now out of the diamonds, a long position. 
it was just a train made money, but uh, it was a way, way better yesterday, obviously. Um, I still think that the day is young. I, I think that if you look at the VIX index, VIX.X, um, up quite sharply, there's a chance. You see, there is so much selling. There's so much negativity right now that in a sense it's creating some kind of a cushion, not in the weak sectors, but in the in the sectors that are trying to hold. And that's really what I'm monitoring, and that's going to be really important. So let's go to all the questions that I had. So I'll go step by step. I missed, uh, let's see, Kevin, you want to, oh, Procter & Gamble. So Procter & Gamble is up. 10 cents today, 162.67. Now this is part of the, this is part of the whole sequence of uh, looking at the XLP, which is XLP, which is the defensive area. That's the Staples area, and uh, the Staples area. It made a high of 81.34, dropped sharply yesterday, intraday into the 78s, and now it's trading at 79.43. Now the reason what I what I said to uh, my subscribers is. Let's monitor to see what's happening in the Staples area. So Procter & Gamble. So the question is really basically, can uh, can uh, Procter & Gamble, is this a place to get into Procter & Gamble? And what I'm going to say is these double tops, I have a tremendous, I always find that the, I'll almost, I wouldn't say everyone, but almost all of the technical uh, aspects that I've developed over the years, certainly I call them propriety in the sense that I developed them myself, and if they're public because I discussed them, that's fine. It was still, in a sense, proprietary to me. Um, and what I noticed over the last uh, maybe a year and a half, I've been talking about the incredible action in the market. It doesn't matter what position, what securities you're looking at. The going from a top, perhaps an all-time high, down sharply. This goes from 165 Procter & Gamble PG, <clears throat> is a symbol of household products, goes to the 144s, and then screams back up. And where does it go to? It goes to within 40 cents of the of the previous all-time high, 165.35. It goes to 164.90. Look at Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson broke above the 179.88. It's in leg D right now. Um, it's had these four uh, patterns that I've tried to discuss as a vertical assessment. And right now what we're looking at, <clears throat> it's made a new all-time high, but the technicals are getting, uh, they, they're good, but they're getting a little weaker than they were. Each time it's gotten a little bit weaker so, so far, that's good. Uh, let's look at, I want you to do them in sequence. So the question came in, uh, what about Clorox? I did this yesterday, and I said it's holding well. I perhaps just start a little position there, I said, but basically um, the way it's acting right now, I'd also want to, I, I probably want to wait a little bit. So today's down three and a half at 148.78. Uh, I, I think it's acting okay, but I spoke about that big gap. So Clorox is in the, I don't know if it's in the, the I should have gone through it, I, I didn't have a chance to, but it's like an XLP and like a Staples. Um, so it's pulling back. If you if you go on and we go to, uh, let me go on to, look, Pepsi Cola, Pep, P-E-P, -P, holding, it went to 177.24. These double tops are just uncanny. And most of the time, you get a pretty decent pullback from them. So back on the 21st of January of this year, uh, PEP, PEP, PepsiCo, um, sodas, snacks, etc., goes to 177.24, drops sharply to the 153 area, and then what does it do? In weeks, it has this, almost a single leg up and it goes to peak E slash A to 177.24. So actually, it's not even an E. It's still a question about, so this is, if it was one penny higher, then I could call it E. Right now, I'm calling it a gray A, gray A because it hasn't broken to a new high, and it hasn't take, it didn't take out the low that was made back in October, so it's much higher than that. So this is either a continuation pattern in a V-shaped formula that we're looking at, left side, right side, price, time match. And look at that. So it's holding well. If you look at, so yes, your double top, 
you look at Coca-Cola, no, it did something a little different. It broke out like um, Johnson & Johnson. It went to a new high. So that's, a, that's important, Coca-Cola, trading down 13 cents today after making your all-time high at about 67-something yesterday. So what I am doing here is I'm trying to say I'm watching this XLP very closely because if – there's going to be some kind of a market rally. And we'll know, I mean, as it stands right now, it'll be just a, a wonderful surprise for Microsoft to really scream to the upside. It'll be unbelievable if Google comes out with something that says, oh, we've got, we're going to be buying back uh, five trillion worth of stock and we, we've come out with a new system of uh, telephonics communication you won't need verizon or anything else you can just go straight to us and it will be the new community i don't know what they can do but the price as it stands right now on google uh, down 64 says this is very ugly in the monthly chart if you look at um, apple coming up with earnings soon Apple's holding much better than the others. I think they have their, their, their commitment to monthly payments uh, for all their products. Uh, that kind of generation of, of income has worked for them beautifully. And people are really, uh, people who have Apple stick with Apple. That's the way it looks like. Um, so we're, we're looking at Apple coming to a trough D above the 200 period moving average. It's Amazon that I'm watching closely with Google. Amazon's the one that I said. I think it's going to be retesting that left side low of 2675. I'm just guessing now. I think it was right there. So the answer is, to those of you, a number of people ask me about the staples sector. Yes, it is a sector that's in play. Yes, it's work up until now. But is this inflationary aspect going to impact stocks like a Procter & Gamble uh, stocks like, um, uh, say, uh, let's go to uh, Johnson & Johnson or Clorox because people are going to. But will they use less or will it just be a slow degrading of, of, of purchases? Um, so the low of 2671 in Amazon, something has to be spectacular to really work because if you're looking at the RTH, which is the retail uh, with 20% Amazon is holding really well. If you look at the XRT with an equal weight, so Amazon is just equal weighted, that doesn't look as good. And yet the retail sector is holding fairly well, but on its way down. The tide in the weekly chart is a sell mode. There may be a sell signal at the end of the month, in, by Friday, in the, week, in the monthly chart. And that would impact Amazon. So I'm covering that, and I'm going to say, for Procter & Gamble, I would say... I would have a little, I think it is acting very, very well, and it has made a dump. I'll do it in a moment when I get back. I'll be back in a moment. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, 
as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So the question came in, I'm sorry, Eddie, I didn't see your question until, a bunch of questions I didn't see until after the show. Um, is the low in the S&P uh, something that you can consider uh, the low? In other words, could there now be a really strong balance? He said, I believe uh, uh, some people were thinking that this could be uh, a low between Monday and Tuesday of great significance. And my answer, I would have said to him yesterday, is that no. The reason why we've got so much cash for my subscribers to my opening call is because it's this is when you look at all the different sectors and you look at all the different stocks. Um, and I don't look at all, but I look at enough. The reason why, even in a deer, which is another question I'll deal with at the same time as he's talking about uh, the general market, a deer did this left side, right side um, vertical assessment where at the high of 437.98 uh, in March, pulls back and then goes to 446.76. We were long, we took profits um, uh, little bits off and then got stopped out for a profit there as well. Um, and I said, no, we're not going to hang around you in case this drops. So for deer, which under these conditions should be really, I mean, if you're looking at wheat, if you're looking at all the grains, I think there's going to be product shortages because they're not getting to market. And the ones that are getting to market are getting sold so quickly, you can't replace them that quickly. This is what I'm thinking. So deer is in the farmer in the tractor and farm, farm equipment area, and Caterpillar is in the utilitarian area for the um, infrastructure. And that made a peak deer 237.90 and pulled back sharply. So I'm very, very cautious here. Um, at the same time, yes, we've been lacking in short positions. I just, it's, the focus has been on what's working out on the bigger positions for subscribers who know that keeping your cash, you know how I am for, for I believe in keeping your capital as sacred as possible. You can always make up even an, an 8 to 12% loss. You can make that up if you've got good techniques and you've got good skills. But when it gets to 22% or 28% or 60% as we've seen in some of these uh, uh, stocks, I'm not interested in that. I'd rather miss an opportunity than see that cash, uh, the cash security that we've built up disappear. I'm just not prepared to do that. So that's that. So we're not talking about going to maybe a nibble on Procter & Gamble and all that. All I'm saying is that if this sector, if the staples sector starts to decline, you had better find another area that's going to be um, a successful, at least trading vehicle. I think we might have at least two of our stocks might be in that area. 
We still have the DBA, which is the uh, DBA Agricultural Fund. Talk about double tops. Just look at, I don't want to run out of time. So talk about double tops. Look at this. From the high that I thought would be appropriate as a target to the upside, uh, June of 2016 of the DB Agricultural Fund at uh, 23.01, plunges down to 13.25. We got long almost right away, 13.77 being long. Taking little bits off, but we got our big core position. And what did it do? It hit this week. It hit a high of 22.88. I would say looking at uh, four years, uh, five, six years, that's pretty damn good, right? And it did that with the left side, the bar that I chose, a special way of choosing the bar. If there's definitely no uh, fulcrum to the downside uh, pivot point or plumb line, I use some other methodologies and where I go from the left side. And this has achieved it. The all time, not all time high. This is already uh, looking at March of 2012. This is, uh, what, 10 years ago. Um, hit 35.58. So um, I'm considering that the grains are in play, but shorter term, there could be some vulnerability. But yes, it's holding really well. It's only down two cents today at 22.13. So I I don't, I don't want to skip. So so the answer is no, absolutely no, Eddie. This is for for us to get to the to talk about. It, and I did this in my webinar that said what are the possibilities of an all-time high in 2022. In the S&P to start a new leg C, I discuss that as a what if situation. What are we looking at? What would take? What would it take to get there? And that's still in play. And I'm not going to be fooled at all in the shorter term by trying to have the overall outlook as going to higher highs, uh, covering having a patina to spoil my my trading in the shorter term. So here we go. Uh, in the, the, the TLT, really important mention in the den, yes. The TLT at 122.94. I have to consider this so far is transitory, the, the move on the upside with yields coming down. It's what we've been discussing. Look, here's the TBT. What did I say? We're looking at the pattern of the ABBV, just as an example, a template where it went above the up channel sharply. Uh, this is FB, Abbott Labs spinoff. Farmer, but just chart band got nothing to do with what the, the, the tradable is that we're looking at. Just the price goes above and then pulls back into the rectangle. If it takes out the base of that, it can come back down and then tries to at least have one touch of the uh, previous trend line support. And that would say that by, give it a time limit, by the second week of May, there should be at least an attempt to get towards the 163, 165 area. It's at 158. So now let's do the same thing with the TBT, which is the inverse. And this is the ultra short Lehman 20 year uh, Treasury bond ETF. Um, it's gone to a doji high at 26.25 on April the 8th, 19th. Pulls back, makes a little H pattern, fails. And now it's under the 14 period moving average. It's about to test. The support that was the once resistance and now becomes support in the Chapman Wave inside track up channel of the bigger, of the larger up channel. And if that breaks, then you can see, in this case, I'm using something a little different. I'm going to use a new trend line from this low back in 1st of March or so as a key trend line support. And that says, watch out because 2250 is going to be. Uh, the key support for the TBT, and that's the way we're looking at it. So yes, this is a really necessary bounce. And my thinking was, as these pull back and as the commodities, as crude oil pulls back, so we would see some kind of uh, rotation out of maybe the staples, we don't know yet, the staples, um, into, and then we'll see what sectors it is. Does Microsoft, give us a clue. Does Google give us a clue at the end of the day today? This is such an important moment. I'd rather be, I'd rather be chasing a, a move to the upside than getting in early and just seeing a collapse overnight. Uh, I just today's a really important session. Actually, all week. So that's I covered that question, that question, that question. So any of the answer is no. I think we're still in this big consolidation phase. Oops. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Is that me? 
Uh, let me just check. Uh, let me just take that. All right, I got a break coming up. Uh, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. Where is this? Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I always remember, I always say that the number of bars on the left to the upside or the number of bars on the left to the downside can be matched to the right without a crash. Look, this is what, what's happened here. Does the start to tank right at 42.17 in the 10-minute E-mini bar? And then it comes to the same number of bars going to the low that was made yesterday at 12 o'clock at 41. 95.23. Talking about that, so just let me do this real quickly here. Yeah, I, I'm not talking about the semiconductors. As a question came in, why aren't you looking at NV, N, N, Nvidia? I've been uh, on, I've been a major sell uh, on a sell mode for the semis since almost they made their top. I don't want to discuss it they, until they can show real strength. That's something completely different. Look at this. Uh, this is the uh, USD JPY. Look at this monthly chart. Look at these. Look, it's down today, uh, down to 127.18. But look, I talked about those double tops. Well, how about this? Oh, that's a monthly chart. That's okay. Let's go to this monthly chart right here. Look at this. It went uh, the dollar Japanese yen, 
Look at this beautiful left side, right side price time match to where I chose to make the midpoint. And it's gone there right to the month. And it's gone to a high, high in leg E. Look at the dollar, DXY, Basil's dollar, because we're still along the dollar. 103.82 was the high of January 2017. 102.99 was the high that double top at uh, on the March of 2020. And here we are in a shorter time span trying to make this uh, move towards that level. Look at so all these. There, there are so many signs here that we've got to watch the next couple of weeks, now, week or two, uh, end of end of April candle, and then the beginning of a May candle to see exactly what's happening. Uh, look at the USD JPY, how it's pulled back. This is the dollar. Oh, I just did that. Look at the EUR USD. Look at this EUR USD. Uh, look at this. I spoke about it a long time ago. I said the price. Don't think that you always have to crash to the downside. Sometimes it's the same number of bars and the acceleration to the downside is just adding the number of bars. 1.0664 was the low that I discussed in the uh, euro dollar currency pair back in March of 2020. Where are we now? 1.606478. We're almost there. Isn't that amazing? And a monthly charge, 